Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Let's see. Mm -mm. Guys, let me know if you can hear me because I am not so sure. Well, no, you should be able to hear me. God knows with this darn technology. Um, Hey guys, yeah, let me know if you can actually hear me because it doesn't show me anything on the mic. Like when I talk, it doesn't, it doesn't show me that it's recording. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Transport King. Thank God. <laughs> How are you guys? I know, again, a little bit early. Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. Tomorrow's going to be a tough day for me. <laughs> it's like everything. Do you know like those moments where everything kind of piles onto one day and you don't know how you're going to do it? And then at the end of the day, you're completely out because you did it and you don't know how. <laughs> so that's for... That's tomorrow for me. Well, actually, all of next week is going to be a fun week. <clears throat> and there we go. <laughs> I see the 100% coming in. Yeah, so you guys can relate. Uh, all right, we have a little bit more time, three minutes, before I actually start answering questions. But yeah, I've been um, kind of looking at sonar to figure out what's going on with those volumes. Remember, remember how sonar, um, they sent uh, an email saying that there was some data issue. And excuse me, guys, something's wrong with my voice today. I don't know what it is. So bear with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that volume hasn't been corrected yet from what I see. I don't know what is going on. So, but we'll talk about it in just a moment. Also, I need to let you guys know that I might step away for a minute in the middle of the live um, because one of my guys, he needs to get his uh, tires changed. And when they call, you know, all of that. So I'll step away for a minute if it happens during the live. Yikes, my voice is horrific. <laughs> mm. Hello to everyone. Mm, fresh start. Should eight foot flat bed or 53 foot step deck? I mean, I've had such a bad experience with step decks so far, but this is completely my fault. I prefer flatbed, but I'm not the perfect person to ask just because we haven't had experience with a real step deck that has all the equipment it needs in order to take step deck loads, right? I know that partialing on a step deck can be amazing if you know how to look for partials and you can figure that out. But yeah, we haven't had a chance to do so yet. Although I have to say thank you to you guys because so many have sent links to the email, uh, to my email explaining how to put on ramps. And I'm going to forward them to my business partner to see if we can actually do something to the step deck that we do have uh, <laughs> instead of returning it and getting a flatbed. Oh, I'm so glad Zanetta or Zanita. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. That's amazing. Love to hear that. Hello from Cali. Hi. <laughs> Hi, no clever name. Uh, 
What do you think about the current gas prices went up and when do you think they will go back down? You know what? To be quite honest, fuel is something that I'm not very um, proficient in. Let me see where we are in terms of diesel prices as of today. Uh, yeah, it went down a little bit. Now it's $4.55 per gallon on average, uh, the national average. So it is going down a little bit from what I have seen. And again, I'm not someone who um, follows, not follows, but who really understands the connections, the big connections that cause the diesel prices, right? Um, and the fuel prices. But from what I do know, the um, the price per ba barrel went down. Did it? Hold on. I'm curious now. Crude. Um, uh, well, no, didn't. I mean, yeah, it went down a little bit, but now it's, I need to look at the uh, historical chart. But yeah, diesel is something that in terms of when do I think it will go down? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know when um, the spot and contract rates are going to be a little bit more level. It's a crazy market right now. How's the reefer market right now? It's pretty horrible, <laughs> to be quite honest. You know, the reefer... I just I'm comparing to what it was like when we started in 2019 and then what it's like right now, um, what it was like two years ago. It's horrific. Yeah, it's really hard to find decent loads. The only way you're able to find decent loads is if you're a patient and someone cancels at the last minute and the broker is forced to pay a lot of money. And of course, if you do end up in those better market areas like the Midwest, you can get a decent rate. The question is, where are you going? Hi, everyone. Um, Gerald, what do you mean how to charge on a reefer? Like how to charge, what kind of price to set? Something you have to remember. Unfortunately, carriers are not the ones who are charging. If you're working up the spot market, especially, it's the broker who sets the rate, which is completely backwards. But this is the reality. You can't just, well, this is what I'm charging because it doesn't work that way at the moment, unfortunately, although it should. In terms of a reefer, though, something you have to remember is your cost per mile is going to be higher because of that reefer unit that needs fuel, right? And if you're operating that reefer unit to the max, like negative 20 degrees for ice cream in the month of August, yeah, you're going to have to, you know, look for a higher paying load because that cost per mile for you is much higher than for like a dry van or a flatbed. Fresh start, I already answered your question regarding the flatbed and step deck. Um, let's see, where was I? Uh, hi guys. <laughs> what year step deck do we rent? Good question. I have no idea. I'll tell you right now. Uh, is my equipment cheese louise rental okay no this is not it um it's uh 2023 hyundai Hu is it hyundai or hyundai i don't know hyundai 53 step deck California average six dollars stay away. Yeah, I I mean the California diesel prices are always going to be on average a dollar more than the national average. Um, yeah, I it's terrible. <laughs> it really is terrible. In the, these moments, uh, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows this here. I am obsessed with Tesla. I am obsessed with Elon Musk. I have a Tesla and in these moments, I'm just so grateful that I have a Tesla and I don't have to worry about the fuel prices for that car because that, that would just be a mess. I'd be crying. <laughs> Hi, shoeless trucker. <laughs> 
James G. Isn't that the truth? Uh -huh. Let's see. <clears throat> What is the average Van Freezer drive? HA, I didn't fully understand your question. If you're asking about the average rate per mile on the spot market, reefer is around $2.30 per mile for loaded miles, although I do not see these kinds of rates, <laughs> to be quite honest. But then again, we don't run short loads with reefers. And for dry van, it's $1.98 as of last week. From what I saw, Thank you, Alejandro. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for your support. The whole week got only one load and spent 2600 for breakdown. Yeah, I hate those kinds of weeks. We've had a lot of them in the beginning of the year with our older truck, which was not fun at all. <laughs> Uh, state specific videos, you know what I am not anymore because I do have that um, downloadable, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Under Google Docs, you there is a downloadable thing. You just send me an email, I'll send you the state specific checklist, but I'm not doing those videos anymore, no. What reefer rates are you getting? I mean, I don't know, it varies. It varies. Hold on, let me see. So, I mean, gosh, the lowest one we have gotten was $2.22 per mile. The highest was $2.86 per mile. What load was this? It was a load from Keysby, New Jersey to, to where? Where was it going? Oh, there we go. Keysby, New Jersey. No, sorry. Springfield, Missouri to Keysby, New Jersey. Um, and this is because Midwest, Springfield, Missouri is part of the Midwest. So when you go to the East Coast, of course, you're going to get a better rate per mile. Um. I do not have experience with box trucks, hot shots, uh, cargo vans. I have experience with semi trucks and three types of trailers, dry van, flatbed, and reefer. Step deck doesn't count yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in terms of power only, uh, I do not have experience with power only, but from what I see, the rates are not there for power only. Power only is something that Amazon offers quite a bit, but their rates have always been much lower than even the load board rates, which are not great as it is. Hi, Trey. Little Tommy, <laughs> how do you do that? How do you double broker a load unintentionally? <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Hyundai. Okay, Hyundai. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> See, I thought it was Hyundai. I don't know where I get my pronunciation from. Hyundai. Got it. <laughs> Tesla truck. No, you know, funny thing is, as much as I love Tesla, and as much as I absolutely am obsessed with the way, it's not Elon Musk per se, <laughs> it's, it's his brain. I'm obsessed with the way his brain works. Uh, the Tesla truck, I don't think it's anywhere near ready. And I, I, I just, no, no. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to put a Tesla truck in our fleet right now. Oh, that's amazing. Fla uh, Black flag lifestyle. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the power only. I just judge from what I see on the load board. Um, uh, Beth Holland, I actually stopped my Patreon. I stopped it because I'm not able to keep up 
And yeah, I kind of overextended myself there for a moment. Thank you, Robert, for your support. Um, I'm a broker with reefer loads of eggs from Middlebury, Indiana to Raleigh, North Carolina, and carriers demand over 350 per mile. I think carriers are right, Robert. They should be demanding 350 per mile. Eggs are extremely finicky, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of claims with eggs. That's mm -hmm. a lot of risk that the carrier is taking. And you're sending them to North Carolina, which is a much worse market than Indiana. So $3.50 per mile is the minimum they should be asking for. If you think about it, like just th think about it for a minute. What is the carrier hauling and what kind of risk is involved with hauling eggs? Thanks for your support. Um, my email, AJ, oh, there we go. Transport King replied. Yep, talk about trucking at gmail.com. That's my email. <laughs> mm, Assad, I'm not going to respond to that comment because I am half Ukrainian. <laughs> Definitely not a comment um, for me to respond to. Thank you, Rose. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> mm, what's the difference in the peak carrier population in 21, 22, and 23 versus three years prior to 20? 21. I mean, I can see the amount of MCs. I'll never be able to find out how many uh, trucks there are. But yeah, from 2018 to 2023, it's like it was kind of slowly going up from 2018. Then in 2021, it went sharply up. And since then, it has been slowly, slowly trickling down. But the increase at which carriers entered this industry when it was a boom because of COVID is so steep. Whereas the decrease carriers leaving this industry is close to nothing in comparison. I mean, relatively. Jerry, yeah, I do all the filling out of the carrier packets. <laughs> Thank you, Mihai Rotar. <laughs> oh, it's football Sunday. <laughs> When does this, I mean, I think every Sunday I do um, a live for the past few months, there was some, some game on. See, I don't follow sports, so <laughs> I have no idea what is going on, but it's okay. It's, it's more manageable this way. <laughs> this last quarter trying to survive. Yeah, I think we're all in survival mode at the moment if we're in the trucking industry. I mean, it's not easy, for sure not easy. What will happen next? I'm no wiser than you are. I know that, uh, you know, if I had to just, I'm not going to even say predict, if I had to think about like, when could there start being some change? As I always say, quarter two of 2024. But the market is really, I mean, it's so crazy right now. <laughs> Alejandro, it's possible, yeah. Michael, will I get back into dry van? I, I don't see it happening in the near future because those rates are, for our operations, those rates are nowhere near what we, they're survivable if we're happy breaking even and maybe earning a tiny little profit, which is something I, if I am working my butt off, I expect to not just break even. <laughs> Does that make sense, right? I, I don't want to go back to an equipment that is going to, in the best case scenario, give me a tiny little profit. No, this is not what I'm working for. Even though I love this industry and it's not really about money, uh, that reward, that money reward still has to be there. We don't work for free, right? Uh
Do you also send in the power of attorney with every package? Rose, can you shoot me an email? Because I didn't fully understand your question. Yeah, shoot me an email to talk about trucking at gmail.com. I have a new driver. What to do if he checked in accidentally? He said at the pickup with the name of the previous company. I mean, oh, and they put the previous company on the bill of lading. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would, I, I like calling <laughs> the, sh you can call the shipper and ask them to send you a clean copy with the correct company name before he delivers it before, but then there are signatures there usually. Mm. That is an interesting question. I, I need to think about it. <laughs> I'm sure. My thoughts on uh, freight going into holiday season. I think that freight is going to be, I mean, there is not going to be a holiday season like we expect. If anything, it's going to be extremely muted. Personally, I'm preparing our, you know, our operations for the worst possible outcome at the moment. And again, this is just the way I think, because I believe I'm a strong believer that if you, you can always hope for the best, which is what I do, but you have to always prepare for the worst so that if the worst does come, you're ready. But if it does not, it's a pleasant surprise. But I'm not, you know, I, I'm kind of, it's all hands on deck, basically, right now. I don't see any huge peak or relief during holiday season. Um... Yeah, never haul eggs. We've hauled eggs and we've never had problems with them, but they're definitely, I mean, that's the commodity that has to pay higher. Ice cream has to pay higher, right? Anything that involves the carrier taking on more risk, especially with a claim, yeah, you have to pay higher. Cody, you feel the rates have been going up? That's amazing. I haven't seen that yet, but hopefully, hopefully we see that. Um, our old truck was a 2018 Freightliner. All our trucks are Freightliners. Freight caviar, send me an email. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, have you managed to get any direct shippers from YouTube? No, <laughs> no, I haven't managed to get any direct shippers from YouTube. Uh, but my, for our flat button step deck, it's much easier. You know, my business partners are the ones that are operating the open deck trailers and, you know, they talk to the shippers there and, that's how we get some contacts. But the problem is getting direct shippers is not, I wouldn't say that's the hardest part. The hardest part with a direct shipper is the fact that once you get them, you have to build a relationship so that they give you loads constantly. It's impossible to build a relationship when you don't have that much capacity. I mean, we do have uh, trucks in our companies, but we don't have near enough trucks to consistently provide consistent capacity to those shippers to actually build a relationship. Um... If you have covered sorry, I'm just, um, the... sorry if you have covered this, but can you go into depth on what, um, 
authority is. Authority is um, the MC number. So if you're an interstate carrier, you need operating authority, which is basically the MC number. To do that, you have to register with the FMCSA, you have to get insurance on file, and you have to, thanks uh, Freight Caviar, I got your email, and then you have to get your BOC3 on file. This is your authority. This is what brokers look at. The age of your MC number is what will determine whether a broker today will work with you right away or will ask you to come back in a year. <laughs> yeah, so that's the authority. Hope that answers your question. Uh, you know what, guys? If I'm skipping your question, I do apologize because I see when I see a question... I usually go in order, but then when I look up, I see that another question pops up under one that I answered. So if I skip it, send me an email. Sorry. But Jerry, do you have specific brokers that you work with more often than others? Um, yeah, I try to work with as much as possible. Uh, what are the brokers that we have been working with? We've been working with Reliable Transportation Solutions, RTS, which is where we got our fuel card. But um, the brokerage side is not, not the biggest fan of them, to be quite honest. Um, we have been working with r and &R. Uh, And other than that, no, not really. Although... We just worked with Mass Global, and I really like them. I really, really like them. They, the, they were a breath of fresh air for sure. Sorry, there's a little kid there. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, Yeah, I agree. The market is going to correct itself. And unfortunately, a lot of people do have to go out of business for that. I get called heartless for saying that more often than not, but this is the truth. Mm -hmm. Get a web. Mm. Mm. Get a web designer to fix it. Remove the old company name and add the new one. Thank you, Keneth. Holiday season is over. Well, I mean, not quite over, but yeah. In terms of this year, definitely over. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, so what was the insurance for new venture with a brand new CDL driver in 2019, we were in, in the exact same position. And our insurance was something like 26, 27 K a year. We got really likely because it was a, uh, likely we got really lucky because it was a new insurance provider, a Canadian one who just got the market in the U S their name was Trishura. Today, they no longer take new CDL drivers because they've been burned so much. But at that point, it was just a stroke of luck. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That is the best advice, by the way. <laughs> James G, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That is really good advice. I used to be of the, I used to agree with the opinion of Carnegie, who said, put your eggs in one basket and then watch them like a hawk. I used to be of that opinion as well. But I agree right now that don't put your eggs in one basket in anything. Diversify, because if one thing starts going to crap, you can, you know, you can focus on the other things that will maybe, first of all, help one thing. And second of all, uh, you know, you are not feeling like everything is going to crap. Does that make sense? That's what I try to do every single day. Like right now, I don't know if I should, I started learning coding and programming. And I'm so happy to say that I actually understand it which is amazing. I thought I would never be able to understand it. But yeah, this is another way because I have a plan of what I want to do in about two years. 
it's not going to be just the trucking companies. It's going to be related to trucking, but I'm just, just don't stop learning. I think that's the biggest thing. Don't stop learning and don't focus on one thing and that's it. Thank you, Sardor. <laughs> For my ELD, I use Motive. It was formerly Keep Trucking. I really, really like them. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I'm behind. I'm very, very behind right now <laughs> on the comment replies. <laughs> Mm. Bashir, that is a loaded question. I don't operate dry van, so I would not, and, and we don't run regional, we run o OTR. But guys, Bashir is asking if it's possible to make gross 5K a week in a dry van in five days, $1,000 a day on a dry van running regional. This is something that from experience, I cannot tell you because we haven't been operating a dry van since April, May. Mm-hmm. Yep, we are still hiring. We are still looking. Hmm. Um, is there a chance for new carriers, flatbed, that have been active for six months to survive and get competitive loads? That's a great question. So what I know is that today brokers are definitely finding any excuse to not work with carriers or to deny carriers. But I believe that, yes, it is possible. I believe it is possible if you just, it's just going to take much more work. With a reefer trailer, is it possible to grow nine to 10 K a week? I mean, and get a good rate per mile? I don't think so. I haven't, I haven't seen it at the moment. <laughs> yes, I do offer online classes. I have a dispatching course and I have a carrier course, depending on which one you want. But both of them are on my website, truckingmadesuccessful.com. Uh, Jerry, multiple picks and drops on a load. What are my thoughts? Usually I try to avoid them, but there have been moments where it has paid to take those kinds of loads. The most recent time was actually, I mean, it's not the most recent time, but the best example I can give you, it was a short run with like seven drops on the flatbed and it paid for those it was TQL that I remember. Hold on. It was back in some time and it was like 2000 some dollars or a crazy rate per mile, crazy, crazy rate per mile. Where are, where are my $2,000 loads? Oh, there we go. Okay. 227 uh, miles, $2,000. So those kinds of loads that you can do in one day, it was all Home Depot deliveries and they were just first come first serve very close to each other. Yeah, we made $2,000 in a day. And next day we took the same exact load with TQL. It was a really fun time because it was for the weekend and we basically made four grand on the weekend, which made me so happy. <laughs> Mm, Transport King. Really? I wonder what's going on. <sighs> I feel like, yeah, technology doesn't like me. Sorry. <laughs> There's a munchkin just riding the chair back and forth. So cute. <laughs> um... You can always lie and say your new driver has two years experience. I mean, you can't really lie to insurance because they ask for the CDL, right? They check everything. <sighs> yeah. So Bashir, I don't know why they say reefer companies lose money on lumpers. 
I have never lost money on a lumper. Yeah, for reefers, there's often lumper fees, but those are reimbursed by the broker or the broker pays those directly. I always recommend because brokers start finding for new ways to make money, what they started doing is if you call a broker saying, hey, there is a lumper here, can you pay it? They will issue the code where you don't have to pay out of pocket, but then they will charge you a fee for having to pay it. But what you can do is just save those receipts, let the broker not know when the lumper occurs that, hey, there is a lumper, we're paying out of pocket, send the receipt with your invoicing. They have always reimbursed us on lumpers. I have never had once where they did not. No, there was one time. Uber once did not reimburse us on a lumper, but this was because Capstone went down and I couldn't provide a receipt. I tried to provide a bunch of different documents, screenshots, this and that, they still didn't pay it. But most of the time, not most of the time, 99.99% of the time you get reimbursed. So you do not lose money on lumpers. You just lose your cash flow on it for a moment. How to find customers. Web dev, I have a video um, on ways I have found, found to find direct shippers. If you send me an email, I'll send you that um, link. <laughs> Hi, WH. There we go. If brokers are so bad, why don't we become the brokers and work direct? Yeah, it's very hard because you have to understand if you're a carrier and you get a first of all, you don't need a broker's authority. If you're planning to just work with direct shippers for your own truck, you don't need a broker authority. You just find direct shippers who give you freight instead of working with brokers. But if you're looking to be a carrier with your own trucks, moving loads, while also being a broker who's selling loads to carriers, that is going to be very difficult because most insurance companies will run away from you. They do not like seeing a carrier and broker authority under the same name, under the same MC, address, phone number, even fax number. This is like, I, I don't know what is the reason, but I know this to be true. Yeah, but in terms of working with direct shippers, absolutely. You don't need broker authority for that. You have a truck and instead of working with brokers, you work with direct shippers. In this market, if you had a van, would you switch to reefer? Uh, most likely. Most likely. Um, dry vans, the rates there for our operations, they just don't work. I don't like them. They don't work. I don't think they work for any operations unless your cost per mile is ridiculously low, your equipment is paid off, your insurance is low, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I would still switch to reefer. But you have to remember, switching to reefer means your cost per mile is going to go up because of that reefer unit. There we go. Transport King. And I, I tend to agree. Absolutely not 5k a week with a drive. <laughs> not with these rates. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I think I'm caught up, which is awesome. Almost. Um, is it good to pay out of pocket for school or go to a paid training school? That is definitely not a question for me per se, but guys, what do you recommend? Out of pocket for school or paid training school? <laughs> is it a good time to get your authority using DAT boards to start off? I would be doing a disservice to you if I said that, yeah, absolutely, it's a good time to get your authority. The reality is this market any positive news that is happening in this market right now is because carriers are not surviving it, right? I know this is something that people don't like hearing, but this is the God honest truth. It's not because volumes increased volumes. <laughs> Something's happening with volumes. I still, I, I mean, it's horrible to see. And I hope that it's a mistake still with freight waves. Volumes are horrible. Tender rejection started going up, but now made a small U-turn again, again, this market, any 
semblance of good news is because this market is purging out capacity. So how would, like, who would I be? What would it make me to say that this is a great time to come into the industry knowing full well that brokers are very picky, knowing full well that they find any reason to deny a person uh, a load? I mean, yeah, but, but, but I know also that I cannot stop people from coming in. You know, and I try not to kind of push people to come in or push people to go out. I'm trying to give information, just translating information or data. If you do end up coming in, make sure that you have a really nice cushion in terms of cash flow. When would the drive end market improve? We're already in quarter four now. I mean, I think everything will start kind of moving. I don't know if improving greatly, but moving quarter two of 2024. That's my opinion. If you have a reefer, can't you still haul dry van freight? I love this question. I get it um, often. And I think it's such a great question because the short answer is no. <laughs> I mean, sort of. Okay, let me explain. Yes, technically, there are some loads that can fit either on a dry van or a reefer. But you have to rem remember that a reefer and a dry van are very different because number one, the reefer unit itself, you know, the refrigeration unit, it weighs a ton. So the amount of weight the reefer can carry is much less than the amount of weight a dry van can carry. Another thing, second difference, is that the reefer unit, because of the temperature control, it has thicker walls, there's insulation material. So the space inside is smaller than that for a dry van. So no, not all dry van loads can go on a reefer, but some can. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Hi, Ron Smith. <laughs> Info Plus, that is amazing. JJ, that is a great. <laughs> First of all, 250K is crazy. It's crazy for a brand new truck. Yeah, that is insane. And this is Freightliner. I, I mean, I've seen the prices uh, like 180 for ordering a truck, but 260 is steep. Something that I have realized is that the new truck prices have not gone down much. Used truck prices have, but new truck prices have not. So basically, what does that do? It puts people in a situation where they're forced to operate older equipment, not being able to renew their fleet. And that means more expenses when it comes to repairs and maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> Transport King, someone wants to meet you. Navi. Navigator <laughs> wants to meet you in person. Oh, there you are. <laughs> there we go. You guys are talking already. Um, between reefer and flatbed step deck, what is more difficult to dispatch? Excellent question, Valeri. <laughs> For me personally, the most difficult to dispatch right now is the step deck. But again, this is because we don't have the right equipment. We don't have ramps. We don't have load levelers. So we put ourselves in a box. If we're looking at flatbed versus reefer, dry van, I'm not even considering because I haven't been working with dry van since May. But if we're looking May, yeah, I think May. Uh, if we're looking at flatbed versus reefer, flatbed is easier. Flat bed is easier. For reefer, it's a little bit more difficult because there are appointment times and you have to be calculating everything and the loads, I mean, depends on the area you're in, but it's not easy, not easy to find a good load for a reefer. 
<laughs> what do I mean by a nice cushion? 10, 10K is not good. 20K is also not great. <laughs> nice cushion is when you know that you can afford, if those brokers do not pay you on time, you can afford to operate your company. Because remember, expenses, they come right away and there's no way to offset those expenses. You might with a fuel card buy a week, maybe, um, depending on what fuel card you have. Those expenses are due right away, but brokers pay you a month later. Now you can factor your loads, of course, but at that time you're losing a percentage of the load, right? So a good question, I mean, it depends on your operations, how many trucks you have. Danny, I do not offer authority services, but I do have a course which teaches you everything, how to start your trucking company in terms of company formation, what kind of equipment to choose, um, how to get your MC, DOT, BOC3, all of the documentation, how to be compliant and how to run the trucking company. I do have that course. <laughs> What is broker authority? Broker authority is basically an MC number, but for a brokerage. Hi, JP. JJ, yeah, that is the scariest part. <laughs> that is the thing my business partners um, talk about all the time, like, is the spot market disappearing? I think it's contracting quite a bit, not disappearing, but contracting. <laughs> King 90, what does rejection mean? Rejection is when a contract carrier says no to a contract load. And that contract load, after going to other contract carriers who rejected, ends up on the spot market. <laughs> um, hi, Humberto, the trucking guy. Uh, basically, no, not all van loads can go on a reefer. <laughs> Some specific ones can, but not all of them. Hi, Ruben. Where do we operate during the winter time? Everywhere, pretty much. I try to um, avoid the I-80 because <laughs> it always shuts down. The I-70, of course, I try to avoid. So Colorado, uh, the snow, I'm going to mispronounce this, snow Calmy pass, try to avoid. We tried to run the I-40 as much as possible. But in terms of state, we don't avoid anything. We don't avoid anything per se. We just try to keep away from state uh, from certain roads like the I-80 because it shuts, uh, it shuts down and then you lose a bunch of time. I-70 because it's just plain dangerous. So yeah. Freightliner trunk, a new one, roughly 185. Yeah, that's closer. The one that when we were ordering Freightliner trucks, the um, it was 181. I think 181 or 183. Hmm. <laughs> I hope you're going to make a lot of money this week. I hope so too. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, yeah, this is, this is a goal. Whether this is the primary um, driving force of why you're in business or not, for me, it's not that. I'm not in business because of the money. I have never been a person who focuses on that that much. I don't know why. It comes from childhood. Since I was a child, I always had a hard time talking about money and everything. But yeah, we still need the money to operate and we still want to see a profit because it's like winning. <laughs> um,
Mm, Melvin, you applied for a California number, faxed it. It's been two weeks. Wow. Usually it comes within 10 days, 10 business days from what I have um, experienced with my two trucking companies. However, that was in 2019 and 2021, respectively. So it might have changed. I am not sure. But yeah, the California number, you just need to send the application. Yeah, no, I agree, Humberto. The flatbed rates are really, <laughs> they're kind of, it started off so good in April <laughs> when we started with the flatbed. And since then, it's been like a de decline, decline, decline. We have managed to keep the rates more or less okay. I mean, sometimes, sometimes we are not able to, but for the most part, on average, we keep them okay. But this is just patience and waiting for a stress sale. It's constantly being a, in a really uncomfortable mental state. Like I am going to lose the day. It's, it's not fun. I used to have so much fun booking loads. I no longer have fun booking loads. I, it's like, like tomorrow I know I'll have to book several loads. Right. And instead of joy, like looking forward to that, I, I have fear which is, it's horrible. I have fear. I'm dreading it because I know that this is going to be another day of either, you know, hearing brokers offer the worst rates and not being able to negotiate with most of them, or it's going to be a day where I have to sit and wait and get uncomfortable. It's This is day in and day out. For sure, it's not fun at the moment <laughs> to book loads. Um... Step deck, I don't know if it gets best rates. Again, from what I see, I don't see that the rates are much different than for a flatbed. But what we have done, if you guys didn't watch my previous video where I'm booking a step deck load and a flatbed load, what we have noticed, because our step deck does not have ramps or load levelers, is that we are in a really bad situation. It's kind of you know, the volume's not there because you're looking for a very specific load. And then, yeah, it's a mess. But I haven't really noticed in general step deck loads paying much better than flatbed loads, personally. Interesting um, perspective, Ron. Ron says they keep prices of new trucks high, knowing the average person cannot afford it, but mega carriers will pay nowhere near that price because of bulk purchases. Interesting. Yeah, there are states that I avoid all year round. I tried to, we have not once in four years had a truck in New York City. All right. Not once. I refuse to book loads to uh, that place, no matter what. If a truck ain't ma meant to go there, I'm not sending it there. I try to avoid Florida, of course, 100%. I try to avoid, um, I try to avoid Arizona with the flatbeds. I try to avoid Montana. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Hmm. And did I? Yikes. I'm so behind again. <laughs> Could you give scenarios where it would make more sense to accept factored loads over unfactored? Rob, I didn't fully understand your question. This year is the worst year in trucking. Yeah, 100%. But the good thing, again, every single bad thing has a good thing, like a good portion. The good thing is those that do make it through are going to be much wiser and much stronger for the next time. 
Uh, monthly rent for a flatbed trailer. We are paying a thousand a hundred for a fifty-three foot flatbed per month. You know what, Errol? That's a great question. I have heard that step decks are excellent equipment types to partial loads, and that's where you can make a really nice, really pretty penny. Um, AJ, spot market is the load board, right? There's the contract market and then there's the spot market. Spot market is when you grab a load on the spot that has to pick up today, right now, and you get the current spot market rate. Contract is when you kind of contract with the shipper and they tell you that, hey, this is the lane, this is what we're paying. And But the thing is, contract carriers they're not bound by that actual contract. Those are called paper rates. So a contract carrier at any time, whether it's because capacity, they don't have enough trucks, or whether it's because they found a better alternative, whatnot, they can say, hey, I'm not going to um, take this load today, even though it's a contract load. And that's how it ends up on the spot market or the load board. <laughs> I-80 is terrible. It's always a pain in the butt there in the winter. The winds, it's the winds. God have mercy on us. I know. <laughs> I think this winter will put a lot of people out of business. Yeah, I mean, considering the fact, and I'm just judging by our operations. Okay, let's just think about it. Carriers cannot renew their equipment because the price of new equipment is really, really expensive, right? So they're forced to deal with the higher repair and labor costs that are required to maintain and repair the truck. Winter comes, that's when problems start happening with older trucks, from my experience. That's when crap freezes and you don't know what is going on. It's a mess. So most carriers, there are those that know their trucks in and out and they can diagnose the problem themselves. But most carriers like us, unfortunately, I, I mean, like me, I don't know anything about trucks. My business partner does. I don't know anything about trucks. They will go, they'll be forced to go to the repairs, uh, to do repairs on their truck this winter. That is going to cost them an even prettier penny. And then the rates are not reflecting that increased cost. Therefore, people are going out of business. I think, yeah. Thank you, Dondre. Jordan, um, yeah, there was a reason for this. I'll read you the email exactly. So last uh, Friday, I showed you guys that the rejections went up and the volumes went down. So the email was the following. Where is it? When was it? It was the fudge. One moment, please. <laughs> um, okay. So the email that the statement that was released was that last night, meaning, um, what is it called? <laughs> On Thursday, last night, we discovered that a large drop in volumes was related to disrupted data feeds. This was the first time this magnitude of an impact has occurred. We regret that we didn't catch it earlier. Tender rejections and other data sets are unaffected. So this is the reason. There was something with the data, although either they did not correct it or I don't know what's happening. Because if you look at the tender volumes right now uh, without bound volumes, they are like whew, down.
Yeah, Humberto, exactly. No money, no fun, but money is not everything. <laughs> um, AJ, that's a great question. Is there any service offer in trucking? that sends you an email or text if a certain load is posted according to your requirement. I know that oof, Uber and Convoy used to have it. When you do lane preferences, they send you an email when a load fits your lane preferences. DAT, not so much. You can do a notification bell, but that's pretty much it. Thank you, Bashir. Yeah, it is hard for everyone, for sure, JJ. The box truck, uh, so guys, just to, you know, this is for everyone. I do get a lot of emails regarding box trucks, regarding cargo vans. This is unfortunately something that I'm not familiar with at all. I'm not familiar with box trucks, cargo vans, hot shots in terms of how they operate. I mean, I know I have an idea, but rates, um, all of that, not my forte. <laughs> Noble, if you just send me an email about the California number, because it's a lot to go through. Uh, send me an email and I'll send you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get that. Uh, where did I just go? I went somewhere. <laughs> Paul E. Question about last video. When the, when the dude called from a dispatching company. Yeah. I don't trust those people. Here's my, I mean, those calls, those, those are scammy calls. Those are scammy calls. I find them scammy. Um, Basically, they're saying that, hey, we, they're looking on the DAT load board. They see the truck posted. They're calling me saying that we have load options available and they're not a broker. They're a dispatcher, right? So it really pisses me off anytime. I, I get those calls probably around 15 times a day, every single day per company. Remember, I have two trucking companies. So that's around 30 calls per day. So I have no patience for that at all. Dispatchers are worth using sometimes. It depends on your operations and the type of dispatcher. A dispatcher can be an amazing asset, especially if you're an owner operator, one man show or one woman show. A dispatcher can, if it's a good dispatcher, they can really simplify things. Yeah. Dennis, what type of partnership? <laughs> Trent, do you have information on brokers for freight? That is a pretty um, broad question. <laughs> what kind of information? <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> garbage load. Okay. You try to avoid states like Connecticut and Massachusetts. You'll book garbage loads back to Ohio border. Are you talking about that direct shipper? The recycling guy? Is that the one? Because yeah, I've seen that recycling guy everywhere. I think he's, is it Connecticut or Massachusetts for flatbeds? And it goes to Ohio. And it's really a, it's quite literally a garbage load and the rate is garbage. And he's a direct shipper. Hi, dissident. Uh, 
Um, how, uh, how often should you factor your loads? And what is the average they take away from the carrier? That, that depends on your operations, right? If you're really strapped for cash, you'll factor every single load you deliver. What is the average they charge? It's usually between one, one and 5%, right? But usually it depends on how much you factor. But yeah, it's, it's very uh, subjective. Yeah, Eric, I use for the most part DAT um, load board, the DAT load board. That's the one I use. I did not man mention anything about the DAT closure to other countries. Really? I didn't even know. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Transport King. I'm not getting burned out. You know, it's like, yeah, no, I'm not getting burnt out. It's not a burnout. It's disappointment. <laughs> yeah. But I'm definitely, when I think burnout, I think it's like the moment where you just sit and you have to do things, but you really can't. And you're just forcing yourself to do a really piss poor job. This is what I think burnout is. That's not me at all. I am more of a person. First of all, I, I, go through like highs and lows, but I'm more of a person. I'm over this situation in general, but in terms of my motivation and the work I put in and my work, not work ethic, it's not work ethic. It's like, um, the drive, right? The drive is there. The drive is definitely there. <laughs> But yeah, if in 30 years, this situation does not change, hell yeah, I'm going to be taking two-year vacation. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo, where was I? Yeah. JJ, that is a great comment. Yeah, I heard that too. So DAT did get hacked, and a lot of ha and a lot of these people are posing as other brokers, uh, double brokering loads. I have heard this from brokers sending emails to all their carriers that they have worked with. I have heard that from them. I read about it. So what do I think about that? I think it's terrible. And I think the best way to protect yourself against um, the fake brokers is to go to safer and call the office number on safer and always ensure that that is a load that they have. This is what I do. When I'm unsure, I will call uh, the number on safer and I will ask, does this person work with you? Do you have this load number? They say, yes, perfect. Because we have been burned. Huh, Bashir, great question. Do you recommend getting two iPhones, one for work, one for personal? No. <laughs> You know what? I did that. I had two, um, two of them, but, and then it doesn't, you just spend for me, at least you just spend more money and it's really not necessary unless you start growing. Of course, if you start growing to a point where you have an actual office with a lot of people, yeah, of course you need to get a different uh, phone number. But another thing is you can put a different phone number on your one iPhone. Right. You can use uh, Grasshopper. There is Unitel Voice. There is Ring Central, and you can put it on that one iPhone you have. Norman, Norman, that is a horrible price. That is a horrible price for that truck. 600,000 miles, 2016 for 70 grand. Horrible price. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> I use RTS for factoring. 
And I do recommend them. Yeah, I really like them. I like their dashboard. I like the fact that they're always available. If I have a question, they, you know, sometimes there are moments where I do not understand certain things. I call them and they take me through everything. They send me reports. I love it. <laughs> do you use factoring quick pay or both you know what it's an interesting question i try not to factor as much as possible but sometimes i do and when i do uh, it depends right i know what the factoring fee is and then brokers sometimes offer a different fee for quick pay. And then there is the, what is it called? The <laughs> Triumph Pay that offers a different fee. So it just depends. But for the most part, if I factor, I just factor. Yeah, I don't do quick pay. Exactly. I like your contribution, JJ, a hundred percent. Yeah. You've been, you've been commenting like the best advice. Uh, 2% doesn't sound like a lot when you're factoring for one load, but it does end up adding up like crazy. Yeah, Bob Hope, I do. I We do have reefer trailers, yes. <laughs> Any idea when the market will get better? Look, we're all hoping, <sighs> we're all hoping for right now, but the reality is I think we're going to see some semblance of a change in, I need to put these down, in quarter two, quarter two of 2024. This is our the best bet right now. Also depends on what, what happens, you know, you, there was a comment here before that this winter is going to drive out a lot of capacity and I tend to agree. So we need to see what kind of numbers we're dealing with when it comes to capacity leaving the market, because that is a big thing when it comes to the market getting better. We also need to keep an eye on volumes, clearly. Volumes were not an issue until last Friday, and now I'm not sure what's going on. They're saying it was like a data issue, but either they didn't fix it yet, or I don't know what in the world. It's going to be an interesting update next week. <laughs> Fuel discount with RTS. Yeah, we use RTS too for our fuel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you're an independent dis dispatcher, you're booking under your client's MC and DOT number. Mm-hmm. Night Rider, that's a great question. Depends on the area. Uh, personally, I prefer flatbed freight. It's not only, it doesn't only have to do with rate, it has to do with the potential, right? Because there are no appointments there, you can deliver loads whenever you want, pretty much, as long as you fit in within the window. And that allows you more time to grab more loads. Whereas with reefers, it's such strict appointments that loading and loading times are usually annoying. <laughs> and you're just losing a lot of time. But yeah, in my experience, flatbeds pay better if you know where to stay reefers and the market for flatbeds, it's a little bit more um, manageable in terms of how many better areas there are than for reefers right now. Uh, 
Um, where was I? Rather than factoring, won't it be good to charge on a credit card and pay that? Yeah, AJ, that's a great thing. I, that's a great point. So any unexpected expenses that we get, I charge on the credit card for sure, because this is something that I'm not predicting. Certain expenses you can charge on your credit card, but certain you can't. Like for us, we cannot, our equipment payments, those are ACH. So they take the money directly from the account, which kills the cash flow if you don't have enough. Then we have, what else? Um, the fuel. We have a fuel card, but it has to be paid off every single Friday. And that money is taken out ACH. Payroll, ACH. Um, yeah, there are certain expenses that are you cannot pay with credit card. Mm -hmm. And some people are in a situation where they just the cash flow becomes a huge issue. If you're dealing with random brokers hunting those good loads, you might want. Yeah, you know what, Paul? That is a great point as well. That's something that I started doing. Brokers that I do not know, that I have never worked with before, I will factor the load because I don't trust them. There are certain brokers I won't factor loads, like TQL. I don't factor because I know exactly when they pay. They are very consistent. For everything, you know, the TQL is cheap and everything, but one thing they are is consistent in being cheap and in their payments. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great point. Market upturn in the next few years. Yeah, in the next few years, for sure. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. When you're working with a broker, JJ has the good point again. When you're working with a broker, always check their credit score, days to pay, and the history of that. Because something you will often see is like a credit score of 97 and a days to pay of, I don't know, 20. I'm looking at the load board right now. And then in the history, you will see that they just got to that 97 and 20. But before that, their credit score was 50 with days to pay of 46. That is another thing to take into consideration for sure. Reefers are the worst on losing time, 100%. I was reading a comment and then kind of zoned out. Um, the check mark tells you whether they're factoring or not. And this is usually the check mark on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but it's with OTR solutions factoring, right? Because there's very often a broker that does not have a check mark. For example, Gen Pro does not have a check mark on that. However, they do factor with RTS. Let me just double check. <laughs> um, hold on. Um, and wait, what did I do? Search, search. Yep, and they do factor. GenPro does factor on RTS, even though they don't have a check mark on that. Hmm. Yep, 
If a broker has not paid an owner operator, what is the process to request paid through that broker's bond? You'll have to go find their broker's bond website and you'll have to file a claim. They'll probably ask you for the bill of lading and all the documentation related to that load. Then they'll do their own investigation and then they will pay you or they'll get the broker to pay you. <laughs> That's how it worked with PLS, although PLS um, ended up paying us just 70 some days later. <laughs> TQL loads pay out within 28 days. Flatbed loads getting better this week for you? No, not necessarily. Um, but then again, my flatbeds, both my business partners were uh, due for home time. So they were both starting out in the West Coast. Not a great place for flatbeds. So yeah, we'll see how next week goes. Well, one of my guys is going to end up in the West Coast. The other one is in Texas. And yeah, we'll see how tomorrow goes. Um, how good is the discount for fuel with RTS? Up to 25 cents per gallon. Pretty good. The great thing about RTS fuel cards, the thing that I love the most is number one, the, their system and their app makes it very easy to find the cheapest uh, places on your way. Number two is the fact that they are not limited to only big um, truck stops, right? They're, they can, they have discounts within very small, tiny, no name places. <clears throat> <laughs> what do I think about Landstar? I mean, I keep saying this over and over. I know the thing, again, I'm just going to repeat myself. The thing I do not like about Landstar is the fact that they charge you to get paid. <laughs> mm. You upload your paperwork and then they take off like four dollars and something for that it's crap it's it's horrible but there were times when you know they've been great and i just keep that charge in mind the fact that they're a double broker yeah i think they are if you have a new authority who will work with you usually tql but not on all loads um, like they won't give you any ice cream loads if you're a reefer until you have done 10 loads with them or something like that. They have their own system. Um, I think Uber still does. And then some random smaller brokers. Just be careful. Do your research on the smaller brokers. Paul, uh, fuel prices are going down from what I see. But what's going to happen next? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Up to 25 cents per gallon. So if you go to RTS Fuel Card. Yeah, 25 cents per gallon. They have more than 2,400 fuel stations. Pretty good. Thank you, Knight Rider. Yeah, Jeremy, a lot of things are backwards in the broker-carrier relationship. One of them is the fact that the broker sets the rates instead of the carrier. Number two is what you said. Yeah, very backwards. Um, war in Israel will 
put the fuel back up again. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Predicting anything right now, it's very difficult because the data that we look at, it's based on the reality we live in. And that reality, darn it, it changes every two seconds. There was like this thing that someone said, you know what, let's do another five minutes because I see that it's a little bit slower. <laughs> I know that people are watching sports games and everything. So five more minutes. But what was I going to say there? Oh, there was uh, someone who said, I think it was in the beginning of 2022. Yeah, I think it was 2022 where someone said, we're living through historical events every single day. And it's true. I mean, things change in a big way every single moment. We don't have just like peace for a minute. <laughs> Thoughts on last mile? No thoughts at all. Well, I, I, I'm not familiar with that last mile. I haven't done any research on that. Sports games. I know dissident. Is it not? I mean, it's pretty clear that I do not follow sports whatsoever. But people are, you know, I know people love sports. When is, um, I think I asked this last time. When is uh, Super Bowl? Because I know it's Super Bowl Sunday for sure. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Pilot gives more discounts. Do you have to pay a monthly subscription to get the, yeah. So with RTS, we do pay a monthly subscription of 12 bucks to get the discounts and the discounts. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, it's not up to 25 cents per gallon, an average of 25 cents per gallon. My apologies. I... Yeah, the market is really like the weather. It really does change extremely fast. Oh, I cannot do that, Saeed. Because that depends on your operations and your cost per mile, right? One person's cost per mile might be a dollar forty, and the next one's two dollars twenty, depending on their operations. So their minimum will be very, very different. Really? <laughs> Did I do that? Yeah, I mean, if you, I'm one of those people, you know, if you observe me for a while, at one point you'll start laughing because I'm the clumsiest human ever. Like if you look up clumsy in the dictionary, it will be my face. Awkward and clumsy. <laughs> uh, what do we have? Oh, that's why I was looking at the time. <laughs> That's what you mean. February. February is when the Super Bowl is. Okay, I still have some time <laughs> before then. Thank you, Valeri. Okay, two more minutes. I'll answer a few more questions. Uh, how much do we pay for a reefer trailer? So one is bought out. One is bought out. The other one is $702 per month. Bye, dissident. Enjoy your sports games. <laughs> um, no, Robert, I don't like Arrive. I hate Ease Logistics. I like r, &R. I think they're, I mean, they're not really small. Um, I like, who was the one that I really liked? Just, I like lighthouse transportation and, um, who was it? Was it this guy? No.
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, I don't remember who else. You know who I really enjoyed working with? It's I've never worked with them before. Western Logistics. I really enjoyed working with them, which is surprising. <laughs> Um, all right, two more questions and let's see. Oof, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Watch out for surge logistics that are going under. Yeah, I think they went under. Don't book with surge, don't book with metal lark either. Um, and boomerang. Boomerang Logistics, or what is it? Boomerang something. I think we've worked with them. They were pretty good. Saeed, as I said before, TQL and Uber are the only two I know, unfortunately, because I, I mean, everything changed so much since uh, when we were a new uh, authority. Brokers became more strict on their requirements. So I'm not sure who else. Used to be Convoy, but I don't think Convoy um, works with new MCs anymore. Yeah, on the road, I have come across brokers with the Go Highway. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, I am going to uh, bounce. I know it's been only an hour 30 minutes instead of two hours. But yeah, life. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Transport King, for keeping it clean. And thank you, JJ, for bringing such amazing insights and, you know, thought-provoking comments. I really enjoyed that. So, and thank you to all of you guys for asking your questions and teaching me every day. <laughs> anyway, I'm wishing you all a wonderful rest of your Sunday. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week at some point. Bye.